I've just posted uh, some review uh, topics for you on Blackboard for your second exam. Um, just kind of the topics that I think are most important, the things that I want you to kind of focus on, bear down on. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll leave them there for you to read. There, there's nothing like terribly surprising there. I mean, it's, it's just the stuff that we've covered. I just went and listed the topics for you. And your best study guides are going to be um, your homeworks, your quizzes, and your labs. So I would sort of encourage you to focus on those. But, you know, we're going to be, you know, circuits, phasers, poles, you know, put a cosine in, what comes out, you know, that, that kind of stuff. So hopefully none of that should be surprising. Um, I'm going to try to do the same thing when I split the exam up into two rooms, just so we all have room to spread out. But I'll, I'll worry about that next week. I'll send you an email. Yes, sir? For that old exam you posted last time? Yeah. Uh, would you happen to have the solutions for that? For the old exam? Did I not post the solutions? Really? Uh, yeah, I mean, of course. It seems more relevant. Exam one, yeah, I do. Exam one, oh no, that's exam one solutions. No, 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 the old exam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just looking through the Blackboard page right now. Um, yeah, there's old exam, but there's not old exam solutions. I owe you a solution. I apologize. I will make that happen. Good. Are we missing some people? What am I competing against? Friday. Friday? <laughs> you had two days off already. <laughs> what else do you people want? All right. Um, so we're going to continue with our conversation about, about power. Um, I'm going to do, um, we're going to try to do, do a few things here to, to kind of um, flesh out a little bit more of what we talked about on, uh, on Wednesday. So we're going to start with, a, with a, a couple of equations from the book, and then we're going to do, um, I'm going to sort of do my own spin on them just to kind of make a better point. So the book starts with this question. So the book says, um, suppose you have... Um, Suppose you have a voltage, and uh, it goes into an impedance. So we'll say that the voltage uh, is equal to um, V magnitude cosine omega t plus theta V. All right. So I've got a circuit, which is basically just a voltage driving an impedance. Okay. So this is some sort of element. And, and what I'm going to try to do is to calculate the power that's being dissipated in that, in that element. All right? So, um, so there's my impedance. Um, so my input is going to be a cosine. So, you know, because this, is, this course is all about AC analysis, we're going to basically just spend our time talking about AC circuits. Um, so cosines. So as a cosine uh, at some frequency, and uh, to make it nice and generic, we're going to say it's got some magnitude and, and some phase, that, that, input, that input voltage. So um, the next thing I need to know is uh, how do I calculate power? It's voltage times current. OK. So what I really need is uh, an expression for the current that's going through my, um, that's going through my uh, element. And for now, let's just write it uh, in generic terms. So, if my input is a cosine, what's my current going to look like? Cosine. It's going to be a cosine. A cosine at what frequency? Same frequency. All right, so for now, let's just leave it nice and generic. We'll say that it's got some magnitude and, and some phase, but we know it's got to be a cosine at the same frequency. If I wanted to, how could I calculate what that current is? Like, what, what's the, how do I use my impedance to tell me what the current is? V equals IZ. Exactly right. So the expression is V equals IZ, or conversely, I equals V over Z. And that would be a, a phasor division, right? So my input phasor is VM angle theta V. We're going to do an example with numbers in a minute. Just, but, you know, and then Z would be whatever that impedance is. You do that phasor division, and that would leave you with... Um, with your, your current um, signal. OK, so let's write this out. So we're going to say that power as a function of time is going to be voltage as a function of time times current as a function of time. Is this true? I think it's true. OK, so now I'm going to substitute and make a big old mess for myself. So that's going to equal Vm Im cosine 
omega t plus theta v cosine omega t plus theta i. So far, so good? Ah! Right? What a mess. Okay, so it's some sort of ugly... Some sort of ugly nonsense, um, but whatever. Let's see if we can simplify it a little bit. Um, so it turns out there's a trig identity we can use to simplify this. Everybody see this thing about, um, let's see, cosine uh, phi 1 times cosine phi 2. You know what you get when you multiply two cosines together? Yeah, that's one of those half angle formulas. It's half of the cosine of their sum and cosine plus cosine of their, their difference. Did you guys see that thing going around the internet, that picture? Uh, sine B over tan B. Nobody saw that? <laughs> Picture of Bill Cosby? No? Okay, never mind. <laughs> it's corny, but it's funny. All right. Okay, so I'm going to apply this trig identity to this power expression just to simplify my power expression. All right, so let's see. That's going to give me Vm Im over 2. Okay, so can someone help me out here? So I've gotten, I've taken care of the half and the VM and the IM. So now I'm going to have the sums of the two, the two arguments and the difference of the two arguments. So what do I get if I add them together? I'm taking this part plus that part. So that's going to be what? All right, so it's cosine of 2 omega t plus theta plus theta, right? So that's my adding these two together. And then I'm going to have another term plus, plus what? Now it's going to be the cosine of their difference. And so what's their difference going to be? It's going to be this nonsense minus this nonsense. The omega t's disappear. That's nice. Isn't that nice? It's nice. Okay, good. Uh, so that's going to leave me with theta v minus theta i. Woo! Okay, we'll leave it like that for a second. All right. Is that good? What's that going to look like? So that's my instantaneous power, right? This is instantaneous power. Should we plot it, see what it looks like? I mean, we should probably do that just to kind of uh, just get a feel for how this game works. Um, So we're gonna use, I'm going to use MATLAB, um, which I understand not everybody has seen. So uh, I'm going to put some code into MATLAB, and then you can, um, you know, I'll post it to Blackboard, and hopefully that will be helpful. Let's see here. I just gave an exam to my signal students. They were not amused. Um, I was joking with him that I gave the exam, I showed the exam to one of my former signal students to see if he thought it was too hard or too easy. And he told me that he thought it was just right. But unfortunately, he was the best student in the class the semester he took it. <laughs> so, um, thought it was reasonable. Okay, so let's see here. Alright, so, uh, so let's start with, uh, with our input voltage. So let's see, VM... So let's make 
let's say that it has a, a one, like a one volt cosine. Um, and what should the theta be? Let's just make it zero. So let's make our input uh, be a cosine with magnitude one and, and zero phase angle. Okay. And um, I don't know. Should we pick a frequency for this cosine? Pick something out of a hat, right? So let's say omega equals um, one hertz. So two times pi times one hertz. Good. Uh, so I can create that cosine. So I can say V equals Vm cosine omega t uh, plus theta V. Uh, oops, I need to define a time vector first. I guess that would be helpful. T equals wind space 0 to 10 seconds. I Don't worry about all this. I'll, I'll, we can talk later about what all these commands do. Um, okay, so there's my input voltage. It is a cosine. Good. Now, um, let's drive this into an impedance, shall we? So, um, I don't know. What's our impedance going to be? So, let's say our impedance is, um, how about a resistor and an inductor in, in series? Shall we say that? So, let's just say for the sake of argument that uh, our impedance is 1 plus... Um, J omega L. So I'll just say 1 plus J, assuming that omega is, um, we'll just say impedance is 1 plus J. Okay, it's just some complex impedance. Um, okay, so now how can I figure out my, um, how can I figure out my, uh, whatchamacallit, my current, without actually having to type numbers in? I've given you the voltage and I've given you the impedance. Right. So I'm going to say, um, so we're going to say something like, uh, oh, it doesn't like the J, does it? Oops, that's not right either. Okay, so I equals um, V, uh, so our voltage was what? Was 1. It was 1 divided by Z. And then, so when I do this, this is basically doing the phasor division for me, okay? What was my voltage? It was one angle zero, right? Magnitude one, angle zero. So there's your one angle zero, and I'm dividing it by the impedance. The result is going to be a complex number that's got a magnitude and a phase angle. So all I got to do to extract those is say, I am equals... So the built-in function in MATLAB is ABS, absolute value. That'll give me the magnitude of my current. And um, theta V will equal the angle of I. So I'm doing the phasor division, and then I'm extracting the magnitude and the phase of that phasor division to figure out what my current looks like. All right, so finally I can say I equals IM cosine of omega T plus theta V and I can plot it alongside the voltage. Do you do omega times t? I do have to do omega times t. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and let's put a legend on there so we can keep track of all this. Uh, legend, voltage, current. Okay, can you see the green? Is that too dark? See if we can change the color here. Nope, that did not solve the problem. Um, is that a little easier? Okay, so uh, I've got a voltage and I've got a current, and I'm liking this. Um, Okay, so where's, and remember, uh, power is their, is their product, right? So how, uh, where can I expect my, my voltage to, where can I expect my power to be biggest? Where am I going to expect my power to be biggest? I mean, here voltage is big, but current is small. And over here, current is big, but voltage isn't as big as it was over here. So, 
I'm sort of looking for places where both voltage is big and current is big. So let's actually go ahead and write the equation for the power and plot it. So according to the calculation we just determined, power is going to be uh, Vm times Im over 2 times the quantity, now it's a big quantity, so it's cosine of 2 omega t plus theta v plus theta i. Oh, snap. Why don't somebody tell me I did that wrong? Okay, never mind. That didn't change anything. Theta v and theta i. Okay, so that's the first cosine term. Plus cosine of theta v minus theta i. Alright, so let's go ahead and plot it. Okay. So... Some observations. What's going on with power? Is power periodic? Sure. Right? Power is periodic. I mean, if my two if my if my voltage is a cosine, my uh, my output is also a cosine. Uh, is it a cosine at the same frequency? Where is it? Is it a cosine at the same frequency? Is it omega t? Twice. Twice omega t. Okay. There it is. So it's so it's good, right? We can see that it's actually periodic at twice the period. Um, and we'll talk in a second about why that makes sense. Now let's see. Your maximum power seems to occur at times when, remember we said it's got to be when both voltage and current are large. Is that what's happening? Yeah, I mean, for the most part. I mean, here power is sort of big and current is sort of big. So that's like a good place where their product would be big. You know, if you go a little bit off that point, um, like... Power voltage might get bigger, but current gets a lot smaller. So that sort of justifies why that, that's the point where the maximum power is. Why does it make sense that the frequency doubles? This is tricky. There's an intuitive reason for why we can expect the frequency to double. Remember, we're multiplying voltage and current. So if I multiply the red signal, sorry, if I multiply the blue and the green signal at this point in time, think about, and now think about if I multiply the, the blue and the green signal at this point in time, how are those products going to be? The same, right? Because here I'm getting, you know, like minus 0.6 times minus 0.6, and here I'm taking plus 0.6 times plus 0.6, so their products are the same. So it seems like... I'm getting one period for the positive phase of, of these two signals, and then another period for the second phase of those two signals. So that does, that does, there's some intuition behind why you're seeing, why you're seeing the power have twice the frequency of the, um, of the, the, the underlying signals. Yes, sir? Uh, I thought power can't be negative. It's like dipping below zero. Ooh, great question. Great question. Um, can power be negative? No, I mean, this is an important question. I'm, I'm thrilled you asked it. And I have to admit, for a second when I looked at the plot, I thought, shoot, <laughs> I've screwed this up. But then I said, oh, no, 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 I'm good. So let me ask you a question. Um, what's the power consumed by this resistor? Right, it's, it's, it's either V squared over R or I squared R. It's the same, or IV, it's the same thing, right? So in this case, it would be one watt. 
So the power consumed by the resistor is one watt. What is the power consumed by the source? Minus one watt. If you follow, if you follow the sign convention, positive power consumed happens when you've got current flowing down, like current flowing from a positive to a negative terminal. So over here, you've got positive power. Whereas over here, the current is going in the opposite direction. So technically, this is consuming. So this source is consuming negative 1 watt, which is the same as producing plus 1 watt. So what's happening in our, so, OK, so keeping that in mind, what's happening over here in our circuit? Yeah, what's that inductor doing for us? I need to like glue an eraser to my hand. Right, so, so in essence what we've got in this circuit is a resistor in series with an inductor and you're driving it with some sort of voltage source. So when you see a negative power, so if if you see positive power, what that means is that current is flowing in this direction. If you see negative power, it means that current is flowing, the net current and the net voltage have to work out so that instead of putting power into the impedance, at that instant in time, the impedance is actually delivering power back to the source. So yeah, you can have negative power. It just means that instead of actually loading power into the inductor, at that instant in time, the, the inductor and the resistor are slopping, slopping charge back into the source. Okay, and that's fine. Like the sources, that's what sources do. They, you know, they're built to do that. So yeah, you can have negative power. It just means the power is sloshing back into the source at that instant in time. Okay, so. We look at this and we say, yeah, 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 this is great. This is called instantaneous power, right? Because I'm getting power as a function of time. So this is instantaneous power. So it's fine, but as we were talking about on Wednesday, it doesn't tell the whole story. And the reason it doesn't tell the whole story is that what we would like is like a single number snapshot of this power to, to give us a feel. Like over here, when I looked at this resistor, I didn't have to show you a plot or a horrible equation to tell you how much power that resistor is burning. Burning one watt, right? It's a number. So I want to do the same thing for this cosine. I want to somehow reduce this power to a single value. Okay, so what we're going to do is, is that, that concept that we talked about on, um, on Wednesday, we're going to take the average power over one period. Okay, we're going to take the average power over one period, and that'll be a wattage. Okay, and that won't be some sort of like, crazy plot, that'll just be a number. Okay, the average power over one period will be something that tells us how, how the circuit is performing in terms of its average power consumption. Okay, because at the end of the day, you're going to want to know how much power does my source need to be able to supply? Like if you, if you have a battery, right, how much power does that source need to be able to supply? Well, if you know the average power, you know, if it's one watt per minute and you know how many minutes it's going to be turned on, you can calculate how many watts it's, you know, how much, how much wattage you're going to need over that course of time to keep your device operational. You don't have to get involved with, um, with a cosine signal, you know, integrating it and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and calculate the average power for our signal. So the good news is, is that there's a shortcut that doesn't involve any calculus, and that is, that is awesome. So. So this is instantaneous power. Now we're going to discuss average power. So the definition of average power is you take your power, you integrate it over one period. So this is my notation. When I do integral subscript big T, that means integrate it over one period. Okay, it doesn't matter where you start doesn't matter if it's from 0 to t, or from minus t over 2 to t over 2. It doesn't matter. Just integrate it over one period. 
And then in order to give you the average power, you have to then divide by the period. Where P of T equals, holy smokes, this nonsense. Okay, so here's what we got to do. We got to take this, we got to integrate it over one period, and divide by the period. Oh. You ready? Do we all know what we're going to do? This is P of T, the instantaneous power. We've defined average power. Average power is the, you integrate your power over one period and then divide by the period. That gives you the average value of your power. Okay? So, I need to execute that integral. So, okay, help a guy out. So, that expression is interesting. Because it's a sum of two terms, is it not? Isn't this expression a sum of two terms? What's interesting about the second term with respect to time? This is a constant with respect to time. Is that easy to integrate? <coughs> Damn straight it is. OK. So if I've got a constant and I integrate it over one period, what do I get? You get the constant. Integrated over one period gives you kt. And now remember, to get the average value, you have to divide by the period. OK. So the average power of that constant is just going to be the constant. So let's write that down. That's one integral done. You're welcome. OK. So vm im over 2 cosine theta v minus theta i. OK, good. Now we've got to take the average value of this cosine over one period. Would anyone like to attempt to do that without calculus? Here's a question. Let me draw you a cosine. Is that a cosine? What's the average value of that cosine over one period? Zero. If you integrate, remember the average value means integrate and then divide by the period. So if I integrate that over one period, what's the integral? Zero. Yeah, zero. Because look. Is it integral just area under the curve? OK. So here's some area under the curve. But wait a minute. Won't that area under the curve get canceled out by that area under the curve? Yeah. And what about this area under the curve? Will that cancel out this area under the curve? Yeah. So for any cosine, average value equals 0. Cosine, average value, zero. OK. So we're done. Right? Because it's, this is the first integral, which we did because it was a constant. The second integral, you know, by all means, if you don't believe me, you should go home and integrate this, right? Substituting in the appropriate limits of integration, dividing by the period. You're going to do a lot of math. I mean, may, I'm not being facetious. I mean, maybe you should do it, but I promise you, if you integrate this over one period and then divide by the period, you will get zero. Why? Because every cosine integrated over an integer number of periods will give you an average value of zero. So this is my final average power. What do you think? Questions? I'm happy to answer them. I'm, you know, I'm happy to, if someone wants to say this is baloney. No? So you just have to get to that point? And then you, don't even, you don't even, yeah. Or you don't even need to do it. Like, you can just skip right to this part, right? This is like a one-time operation. You know, we're calculating the a formula for average power. That's it. You've got it now, right? So 
We're going to do some examples now where we calculate average power. You don't have to go through all that process anymore. You say that's the average power. As long as you know the magnitudes and the phases of your, of your voltage and current, you're good to go. This is instantaneous. You just write that down. Instantaneous power. Yeah? This integrates to zero. But it doesn't have a T. It's a constant because there's no time in there. So that in, this integrates to zero. But this, this is a constant. That's a constant with respect to time. <clears throat> Let's just add that to our plot very quickly, just so we can um, complete making our picture so pretty. So all I'm going to do now is superimpose on top of this the average power. So we're going to say uh, power average equals Vm times Im uh, times cosine of theta V minus theta I over 2. Is that correct? Okay, so then we're going to say plot... Um, <coughs> Oh, what's the easiest way to do this? So P of 1, P of N, comma, 1, 1, times P average. Okay. So there's my average power superimposed. Okay, so does that look like a reasonable value for average power? Well, first of all, it's constant, which makes sense. But in essence, what I'm saying is that if you take this red signal, integrate it over one period, and then divide by the width of the period, you get the blue line. Okay, so in other words, so the period of the red signal is like this much. So if you integrate the red signal over that period, or integrate the light blue signal over that period, you'll get the same integral. That's what that means. You get the same number. Okay, they tell you the same thing. So there's your average power superimposed. Okay, I think that's okay. How do you feel about it? Okay, so let's do an example with numbers now. Um, and this may stretch into Monday, and that's fine by me. Um, So the reason we're going to do this will become apparent in a little bit. I want to make a point. I'm going to make like two points. But um, so in the example we're going to do, let's, um, let's have a voltage source. Uh, a resistor, and let's say a capacitor. All right, so let's, um, bless you. So let's start with the, um, I don't know, let's make the resistor, let's try to keep these numbers sane, right? So let's say the resistor is 1 ohm, and let's say the capacitor is um, 1 farad. And let's say the, uh, the voltage source is uh, cosine of uh, just cosine of T. So in other words, if, if V is cosine of T, what's my value of omega? Right. So one's everywhere, right? You're welcome. All right. So omega equals 1. 
V magnitude, oh, well, okay, we'll just say omega equals 1 for now. Okay. Well, I'm being slightly tricky. So, my first question to you is, how much power, how much average power is consumed by the cap? How much average power is consumed by the capacitor? And you'll never guess the question we're going to ask after that. We're going to ask how much average power is consumed by the resistor. And then we're going to talk about how much average power is consumed by the source. Okay? You'll never guess what will happen when we add all those numbers together. It'll be zero, right? Whatever power being generated by the source, it better be consumed by the resistor and the capacitor. So let's start with the capacitor. How can I use what we've just learned to calculate the average power consumed by the cap? Do I have a formula for average power? Damn straight. Vm im over 2 cosine theta v minus theta i. So as long as I know Vm im theta v and theta i, I'm good to go. Now, what do I mean by Vm? The magnitude of what voltage? It's not cosine of t. It's the right because I'm only interested in dealing with the capacitor now. This Vm and this Im are the voltage and the current at the capacitor. Okay, so I'm only interested in voltage and current at the, at the capacitor. Right? I can't use this V because that V is not the V that's seen by the capacitor. The cap sees something else. Isn't that right? Okay, so because we've been learning phasers and you have an exam a week from today, surely... Uh, we could all calculate a voltage and a current equation to, for what's going on at the capacitor, no? <coughs> and it probably wouldn't even take all that long, right? Well, I like voltage divider. That's, that sounds like the magic words. What's the voltage divider going to tell me? The voltage at the cap. Okay, so let's start maybe with the capacitor voltage. So the voltage at the cap is going to be so how do I apply a voltage divider? So it's my it's my source and it's my source phasor, which is what? Source phasor is one angle zero times. Now I've got to do the voltage divider, right? Right. So what is what is the impedance? What is the impedance of my cap? One over J omega C. And hey, I know what omega is, don't I? One. I know what C is, don't I? One. You're welcome. No, no, don't all clap at once. Um, so that's what? Just minus J? Good. Okay, so uh, if I do my voltage divider, it's impedance of the source, sorry, impedance of the cap divided by resistor plus cap. So 1 minus J. Now what? Help. Right. How do you divide complex numbers? Right. Number one, figure out how to do it on your calculator. Your calculator may have a complex widget. I don't know. It's worth looking into. I have your calculator, by the way. Did you lose a calculator? Like this big? Yeah, it's, on, it's in my office. I did, yeah. Um, okay, but if you can't figure it out on your calculator, uh, what's the standard trick for dividing phasers? You got to go magnitude. Or you got to do a, a polar form, right? So, let's see. So I've got 
Uh, one angle zero times what's my what's the complex form for j minus j? One angle minus ninety. Oh, okay, fine. We'll do it in degrees today. Whatever, whatever. All right. So j is one angle minus ninety, or minus j is one angle minus ninety. And what's my denominator? Root two. Because it's real part squared plus imaginary part squared, square root. So that's root 2, angle, negative 45 degrees. Because it's 1 and minus j puts me here. So that's minus 45 degrees. So putting all that together gives me 1. So the magnitude is going to be 1 times 1 divided by root 2. So that's root 2 over 2, angle 0 minus 90 is minus 90, minus the denominator, so that's minus minus 45, will be a, t a net total of minus 45 degrees. Okay, let's not panic. Good. So what have we just discovered out of all this nonsense? Which of those two terms have in our, that we need for our power have we just fleshed out? We've gotten, do we get Vm? Do I know Vm? Yeah, so what is Vm? Right, it's 1 over root 2, which I helpfully pointed out was the same as root 2 over 2. Good. Do I know Im? Have I calculated Im? Not in this calculation. Have I calculated theta V? Yes, I have. Minus 45 degrees. Good. Oh, we're going to finish this. Good. All right, now we need to get the current. How can I get the current? What's that? Ohm's law. Ohm's law. Good. I equals V over Z. Good. So what is my V? That's your source, one angle zero. What's your impedance? Or, right, it's the resistor plus the capacitor. So that's one minus J. So by inspection now, that's going to be one angle zero over root two angle minus 45. So my total answer is going to be root two over two angle 45 degrees. Is this going to work out? Yes, it is going to work out. Yay. Okay. So I am equals 1 over root 2, which is the same as root 2 over 2, and theta V, sorry, theta I equals 45 degrees. Okay. And now. The grand finale. What is the average power consumed by the capacitor? So the power in the cap, the average power in the cap, is going to be, let's see, so Vm is 1 over root 2. Im is 1 over root 2. I'm going to take that whole nonsense and divide it by 2. And then it's cosine of theta v, which is minus 45 degrees, minus theta i, which is 45 degrees. So I've got cosine of, so OK, root 2 times root 2 is Right, so that, uh, this product is going to be a half. A half times a half is a quarter. So it's a quarter times the cosine of minus 90 degrees. What? What's the cosine of minus 90 degrees? Can that be right? 
But before that was to do with the... Uh, yeah, yeah, it is right. Why is it right? Why is there no... Co- why is there no power consumed by this capacitor? But is, is it ever charging? What's that capacitor doing? It, with a cosine input. Charge, discharge. Charge, discharge. Charge, discharge, right? Voltage goes up, voltage goes down. When the voltage goes up, it charges. When the voltage goes down, it discharges. Charge, discharge. So, on the average, what's the power that's being consumed by the capacitor? Nothing, right? Because whatever power you get on the charge phase, you consequently give back on the discharge phase. So, always, I mean, so this is cool, right? We almost could have guessed this answer before we did the math. But it's cool that the math gave us the right answer. Okay, always, 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 when you have one of these AC circuits, the average capacitor, the capacitor on average will give you no power. What about an inductor? No power. Pretty slick, right? Okay, and we'll leave it there for today. Have fun.